This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Today I decided to do tshuva in public, something that I really like to do. I really love it. I, I know that that's uh, my mission. Um, it hit me um, that uh, I think one year or one year and a half ago, something like that, I gave a speech in Jerusalem and I said, and I promised that, uh, that if Hashem will make me to be one of the hidden righteous people of this generation, so I will be different than all the rest of them, at least in one thing. What that thing gonna be? That I'm not gonna hide anything from you guys. I promise that. I said, if one day Hashem will make me a hidden righteous man, one of those ones that can see the face of Shechina, that can, can see certain <coughs> things with divine spirit, have certain visions. And so I said, you know, I'm not going to hide it from you. That's what I, I I'm not going to hide any of the wisdom, the information that I'm going to receive from you. I promise. I, so. I don't think that I'm one of those righteous people, but I was hiding. <laughs> Certain things I was hiding. So I'm doing tshuva on hiding from you. So today I'm going to tell you a little bit. I'm going to explain to you a little bit more. Last week, one of my students that um, got married not so long ago, not so long ago, so she had a conversation with her husband and they were discussing a certain issue. I don't know what that issue was. And I told her over the phone that when I heard the speech of her rabbi in the wedding, I was very inspired. And I thought that that, that rabbi brought some words of wisdom in his speech and I think that those words were very important for that couple for the future. So I suggested her to listen again to that speech of that rabbi that spoke in their wedding. So when she went to check that video, so she she, it started in a different place and not in that speech of that rabbi. It just started in part of my speech that I was also talking in their wedding. And she heard the, my speech with her husband together. Instead of listening to my advice and hearing his rabbi or that rabbi that was talking in the wedding. It happened from heaven that they heard my speech and she said, I don't know how you do that, but the first words that you were saying in that video was exactly the conclusion of our earlier conversation. Like we were just talking on that issue and I just pushed play and I heard you talking and completing our conversation. So. How you do that? And so that's one thing. And today I had another issue with a friend of mine that spoke with me and he had some kind of an argument with his friend. And after a couple of hours from that argument, 
I sent him a message, listen, don't fight with him. Declare ceasefire for two weeks. Don't, don't be in touch with him. And in two weeks, contact him again. So after 30 seconds, he sent me a message back. I'm sure you have divine spirit because I was just literally texting that person and I was about to destroy him in my text. And, you, and now I'm telling you the truth. I, I don't see those things. Hashem is helping me and using me. I'm so lucky that Hashem is using me to save those people's life. And it's a fantastic thing. It's a great thing. I, I'm happy. Like, I'm not complaining. <laughs> Very happy. Today my son asked me. He said that he wants to write a story but he doesn't have an idea. He was looking for an idea. So I told him, look, think about one of the strongest books that you read until today, one that really inspired you, and go with it. Start writing a tale, a story, a plot that will be based on a similar situation like that book that you... Bring out something from your imagination, from your heart, from your thoughts, based on something that will be similar to that nice book that you read. After a couple of hours, he asked me, he said, but Father, there is an issue. In that book that I read, there are situations that can be very painful, very sad. And I don't want to write something like that. So I told him, and again, not thinking, just talking from the heart. I told him, listen, let's say that that woman that was his mother of the hero, the hero's mother, that she fell off the wagon and she died. Okay, so you don't have to write that she died. You can write that his best friend fell off the boat, for example, and they rescued him in the end. But for him, it was very traumatic. It was very hard because he really thought that he's going to lose his friend. So he looked at me and he told me, Father, it's crazy. How did you know that the hero's mother died while she fell from the wagon? And I didn't know. I'm telling you, I did not know that. I never read that book and he didn't tell me that part of that book. Probably if he would tell me, I would at least try to stop him from completing reading that book. I, <laughs> I don't want my son to read something like, like so sad. But he did. But I didn't know that. But Hashem is putting those words in my mouth and first He's putting them in my heart. But because that I am well connected to my heart, I'm expressing it. And it's being used by Hashem for other people's good, for other people's good, for your success. And then you're coming to the class and there are 20 people or 30 people or 50 people. And online there are another 1,000 people or 2,000 people or whatever. In the future it's going to grow and more and more and more. Because everything that you upload to the net, to the internet, it's eternal. It's there for more people to come and to enjoy. A certain person that I met in in Florida, in Miami, uh, maybe eight, eight months ago. So he told me, you changed my life. I told him, when? I don't remember we met. He said, no, no, you gave a speech seven years ago and you were talking about anger. And like, he started and seven years ago and he saw that video and it changed his life forever. So, now, like I told you, I am a Baal Tshuva. A Baal Tshuva means the person that started his path of coming closer to the Creator out of nowhere, from nowhere. And if Hashem is helping me today to have such power, even if I cannot feel that power, but I can be aware to that power that Hashem is using me to save people's life, and those things are happening on a daily basis. So I must be honest with you and explain to you that you have the exact same potential. Because I am a Baal Tshuva. 
because I started my life from zero. You must understand that it's not because of the, I don't know what, that you can imagine to yourself that in that thing, holiness depends and purity depends and wisdom depends. No, I'm not the strongest learner and I am sleeping at nights, and I am waking up late in the mornings, and I'm not going to shul every day to pray in a minyan. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not. I'm a person that is working for his living. I'm a person that is running with his family, and my children are, 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 are with us, and they're homeschooling, and we're going through a lot, a lot of, of activities together. And with my wife, I am for years going through so many adventures. And, and, and only the point of truth is connecting you to the source of truth that is the creator. And if you're going to connect yourself to the point of truth that is inside of you, you will experience wonders in your life you're not gonna be the same people you were one hour before but if you're just gonna sit and learn without having a heart you're just gonna decide okay today I'm learning Mishnayot today I'm learning Gemara today I'm finishing the Chumash I want to learn all the Bible I want okay great today you're gonna wake up at 5 a.m. and gonna go to shul and to this and you're gonna pray and you're gonna be in a minute if you're not gonna do that with an honest heart, with a wishing heart, with a desiring soul that is thirsty to know what Hashem wants from you, it's not going to bring you closer to Hashem. And I've been there also. I tried that as well. I was waking up in the middle of the night and I was sitting on the ground and reading Tikkun Chatzot and I was trying to cry and I was fasting, fa fasting and I was not eating and I was not sleeping in a bed and I was sleeping in a ch on a chair on a table and when I was waking up I would continue to learn and I, I did all the crazy things of people that wants to come closer to Hashem. I did it all. I promise to you. I went to the most frozen mikves. I was dipping in, in Uman in Russia and Ukraine in the freezing cold. I did everything that was possibly that came into my mind. Everything I tried, everything I tried, but it didn't brought me closer to Hashem like to be honest, to be truthful, to listen to criticism of other people that are criticizing me, to listen to their words. The Creator, He loves the one, He rebukes the one that He loves. He's trying to educate us. If you don't want to learn, you will never going to learn. Even if you're going to see it versus black, huge, large letters on bright, blank, white page, you will see those letters saying the truth to you in your face. If you don't want to hear it, if you don't want to change, you're not going to accept it. You're not going to change. It's not going to help you. If you're going to be the closest one to the biggest rabbi in the world, to the most holiest, righteous man in the universe, it will not gonna help you if you're not going to work on yourself. But if you're going to work on yourself, even if today your spiritual level is equal to a dog or to a monkey, you will rise. You will rise. Even if today you run your life like an animal, like, like cattle, like cows, like, like sheep, like goats, that's who you are. You look at the mirror and you see a donkey. That's how you feel about yourself. You look at yourself and you see an animal, an ape, a monkey, a stupid, silly person, moron, far from every good thing in the world, the farthest one from them all, so low, so disgusting, so pathetic, so worthless, so useless, so weak, so disappointing, so helpless, nothing, nothing, with no, no, no reason to give him another chance. You look at yourself, that's what you see. Shames and horrible memories of your own failures, of lusts and desires and confusions and self-hatred, 
and blaming yourself on everything, hating yourself, cursing the day you were born, everything, worst case in the world. Literally, if you would not be afraid to kill yourself, you would do that long time ago. In that spiritual level, if you're just going to be honest with yourself and try really to have a deep conversation with yourself, what that you will experience, the spiritual development that you're going to have in your life is something that no one else in the world can describe, that can, can understand. And I'm telling you that from my life experience, not because I read it in a book. I'm telling you that what that you can achieve is highest than the highest mountains. The heights and the wisdom and the purity and the closeness to the Creator that you can have in your life is something that cannot be described. Cannot. Cannot be described in words. Why? Because the verse is saying, Rahmana libabai, the Creator, He is asking for your heart. He wants to see your honesty. That's what he wants. But when someone tells you something or if you feel something and you ignore that and you don't want to hear that, you're not going to hear the sign from Hashem. You're not going to accept the message that is about to uplift you, that is about to carry you to the next stage. You're just going to lose that class. You're going to miss that opportunity of learning, of developing, of coming closer to Hashem. But if you're just going to listen to the voice of Hashem, and the voice of Hashem is coming in thin, thin, quiet, very gentle voice, very soft and delicate voice. Which voice? The voice of truth. What does it mean? It's not in the radio. It's not in your, in, your, in your MP3. You cannot hear it in classes. You're not going to hear it from the mouth of the best, strongest, most talented speaker in the world. No. It's the voice of quiet. Your inner <coughs> quiet. It's the voice of truth, of your honesty between you to your true self. People are running away from their real self and trying to imitate other people to become like him and like her and I want to do this like him and I want to do this like her and I want to be look like him and I want that people going to think about me like they're thinking about him. And that's not you. Who are you? Listen to your inner voice, to your thoughts that are coming to you and listen to them. Pay attention to the voice of your honesty and go with it. Walk with yourself into your true self. Find yourself. Find the roots of your soul. Become yourself. And it's not a fantasy. It's not an imaginary thing. Oh, I must go on a search, finding myself. I'm going to fly to the Far East. I'm going to go to the forests. I'm going to go to the springs, to the valleys, to the mountains. I'm going to go. No. Go deep inside of yourself. How you should do that? You should find a quiet place and just listen to yourself. Listen to the voices that you have inside your mind, to the inner emotional noise in the beginning to the doubts, to the questions. Who am I? What am I doing here? Why did I hear that class in the first place? It was the craziest idea in the world. Why can't I be like everyone else? All of those foreign thoughts, filth of your mind, all of the waste of, of, of your life experience, let it express itself in the beginning. After one wave of filth, after second wave of filth, suddenly you're going to hear something that will sound a little bit more familiar. Suddenly you're going to hear certain things about yourself that will be a little bit more pleasant. Suddenly you're going to feel rejected 
and then you're going to understand a little bit more about yourself. And then you're going to learn from that. And you're going to dare to ask another question. And one question will bring you to an answer. And one answer will bring you to the next question. I can give you many examples for that. It's very easy. A person can ask himself, what am I doing at work? Why am I working in that job? Why that job and not to support my family? First thought, first thought, support my family. Great. Is that the way that I should support my family? Yes, it makes a nice income. Great, it makes a nice income. Great, great. That's okay. Cover my expenses. Great. But what with all my angers? Why am I so angry? Why am I so stressed about money? My thoughts, I'm sharing with you, not making up stories for you. Me, I'm working, I'm making money. Why am I so stressed? So why I have my anger? So why? Keep on going with those thoughts. Ask. And then you're going to find out that you are lack of faith, that your trust in Hashem is not as strong as you wish that it will be. And then ask yourself, dare to ask, okay, why don't believe in Hashem? I do believe. Do you believe in Hashem? Yes, I do believe in Hashem. You believe that Hashem can make wonders for you? Yes. So why don't you ask? I do ask. Okay, so why you haven't been answered? It's time to answer. What is your answer? Why I don't believe in myself? I'm not worthy. Why do you think that you're not worthy? You have so many judgments on yourself, so many negative thoughts on yourself. Are they the ultimate truth? Are you right? Do you know for sure that you're right? Yes, you are criticizing yourself. Yes, you do. You think that you're lousy. You think that you're pathetic. You think that you're worthless. Yes, you think that you are a bum. You think you're lazy. You think horrible, horrific things about yourself. Yes, and you have proofs for that and memories and evidence from the past and, 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 and many, many proofs from that. Okay, great. I hear you. But do you know that that is really Hashem's opinion? The Creator's opinion? That's why really your prayers have not been answered until today? Okay, so tell me why. No, no, you should say why. Ask Hashem why. Go, make another step into that holy zone of holiness, of purity. Go talk to Hashem about it. About what? About the fact that you don't know why your prayers have not been answered yet. Ask Him. Hashem, why all of my prayers has not been answered yet? What have I done? Are you angry with me? Ask yourself, do I feel that Hashem is angry? Or I'm just feeding myself with that assumption. Oh, Hashem probably is angry. Oh, Hashem is, no, he didn't forgive me on that thing that I... Maybe you're the only one that didn't forgive you. Maybe Hashem forgot about that thing long time ago and forgave you about long, long time ago. Maybe the fact that you were crying on it once, five years ago, erased it completely. And not only that, it also saved other people. By the merit of your tshuva, you opened the gates of tshuva for hundreds of other people in other corners of the universe. And you're not aware to that at all. And you also, on top of that, Keep on blaming yourself. And it's not logic. It's not right. You're making a mistake. You misinterpret reality. In reality, Hashem forgive you already. Forget, forgive completely. That's it. No recollection to that sin that you made 10 years ago. Why? Because you did Shuba. Because you expressed your regret and you apologized to Hashem and you cried and you said to Hashem, Hashem, is it too late now to say sorry? And he said, no, you can say. And you said, I'm sorry. And he said, I forgive you. I forgive you as you asked me to. And that's it. And that's when there, where that novel finished, ended. But your negative thoughts are keep on dragging it and bringing it to this situation and to that situation. Oh, because that I was this and because that I was doing that. You're making up. You're making up. 
you're giving yourself to the hands of the power of imagination, that that is the devil, the Satan, the negativity, the dark side, and you're just handing yourself over to a bunch of imaginations with no real connection to reality. But in reality, you're a complete righteous man. Why? Because it is Tshuva. And in the place that Bale Tshuva can stand, in the place that people that felt regret and had that sorrow and wanted to change, in the place that they are standing, even complete righteous people cannot stand. Why? Because the level of a person that is able to admit in his mistake and to stand and to apologize and to express his sorrow and to forgive himself on that is a higher level than a person that never sinned before. And it's easy to understand it. That's not something that is hard to understand. It's much harder to apologize to someone than not to. I did only favors with you, only good. Great, we're living together as friends. Everything is wonderful, perfect between us. It's not hard. It's easy. It's great. That's life. It's heaven. It's a blessing. But if I hurt you, and now I realize that, and now I need to come and to apologize to you, if you're aware to it or not aware to it, if you're about to forgive me on it or not, but I'm coming with all of my heart, and I'm apologizing, and I'm expressing my regret, and I'm telling you from the bottom of my heart that I'm sorry, that I hurt your feelings, that I disappointed you, that I was not standing by your side like you wanted me and you expected me to, and like I was supposed to, and I'm sorry on that. I think that that person is a hero. To do something like that, to admit in your weaknesses, in your failures, that's hard. That's very hard. And if you're crazy like me and you're doing it on a daily basis, so a hero is not en enough for you. You're a superhero. You can fly. You can fly. You can find yourself saving lives of people and you don't have to wear the, 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 those uh, uh, underpants of Superman. You can just dress with a black suit and, and fly. You don't need the Superman uniform. You can fly. You can help that person in India, and that person from <coughs> Indonesia are going to send you an email that you saved his life. And there is a whole community community in Zimbabwe that are listening to your classes, and there is a huge group of of people that are 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 working on getting rid of of addictions and they're sitting in a group of 100 people on daily basis and they're going to watch your videos you don't need to be superman you just need to be truthful and then will people going to hear you they going to receive tools from you on how to become themselves they don't need to be supermen. Even if you are supermen, they don't need to be supermen like you. They just need to learn from you how to become themselves. And this is an opportunity that is open to every one of you. Every one of you can be himself. You don't need to be me. You can learn from me how to be you. Because I just learned how to be myself. I'm not no one else. I'm not a hero. I'm not a righteous man. I'm not an inspiring speaker. I don't know. I, I, I'm not carrying no titles. I'm not wearing brands and I'm not carrying no titles. We're branding Yamuna. I'm just throwing myself on the Creator every day. Every day. That's the only thing that I do with my children when we're eating, when, when, when we're sleeping, when we're going out from the house, when we're going into the house, when we're going shopping, when we're going to Daven, going to Shul, when we're learning Torah, when we're learning math and English, when we're doing the daily things that people are doing, in every second I'm crowning Hashem. How am I crowning Hashem? I'm just bringing Hashem into the picture. I'm taking Him to the drive as well. I'm taking him with us to the grocery store. 
I'm thinking about him when I'm talking, when people are talking to me. I'm hearing the voice of Hashem. I listen to the voice of Hashem. And this is something that you can do also in your life. You work in a different place. You meet other people. You have a different family members. Great. You can even celebrate different holidays. It doesn't matter. You can do everything that you do with the Creator by your side. And it's not going to make you to be like me. It's just going to make you to be yourself exactly like that. I am very attached to my true self. I'm just being honest. To find the truth, it's not to go and investigate in the books. You can find the truth in the books. You can find the truth in the forest. You can find the truth in the zoo. You can find the truth in, in uh, Netflix. How do you call that? You can find the Creator all over the place. Enod mil vado. There is nothing except of him. And there is no place that is empty from his godliness now. He is covering himself in very thin layers and in very thick ones. It's very, very hard to recognize him in the filthiest places of them all. It's true. But also in the same time, you usually cannot find diamonds and pearls on the surface. You must dig. You must go deep, deep down into the darkest places of the universe when you want to look for gold. They had to destroy America because of their desire for gold. And to destroy the world when you have desire for gold. You want to be a gold digger, you need to dig. You need to dig. So when you want to find the Creator, you need to dig. You need to dig hard. You need to be ready. A worker is not coming with a clean suit, with clean hands to work. He's working hard and his uniform form are, are, are filthy, is filthy, and his finger fing, fingernails are broken and full of mud and, and earth and dust and, 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 and cracks. Are, are you working or what? You think that to be a righteous man, to be a holy man, it's something that, that you, you, you buy it in a store. Okay, $5,000. No, that is a price for a shaitl, not for righteousness, not for holiness, not for purity. That's a price for a car. That's a price for, for, for something else. That's not a, there is no price that you can buy purity with. Million dollars, I'll pay million dollars. I will pay 100 million. No, you can buy a Picasso in, in 100 million dollars. You cannot buy purity. Purity is a result of labor, of your desire for the truth and not paying attention to the accidents and to the obstacles and to the difficulties. You're just getting above them, over them. You're passing one after the other. In the end, everyone are crying. It's written in the Midrash, in the Gemara as well. Everyone are crying. The evil people are crying and the righteous people are crying. To the righteous people, the evil inclination looks for the righteous people. Again, I need to remind myself. For the righteous people, the evil inclination looks like a huge mountain and they're crying. For the evil people, the evil inclination looks like one hair, tiny, small hair, and they're crying. How can it be that they're both crying? The righteous people are crying because when they're looking back, they're reminding themselves of the war that was so hard and strong against the evil inclination, and they won. They passed, went over above that high, huge mountain, and they won. They overpowered on the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, so they're crying. And the evil people, how can it be that for them, when they're looking at the evil inclination, for them it's just a thin hair? So the mountain, and they're crying. Why the evil people are crying? They're crying. Why, if it was such a small test, such a small hair, why we didn't pass it? We failed. And they're crying on their failure. 
The question is, how can it be that for the righteous people, the evil inclination looks like a huge, a huge mountain, and for the evil people, it looks like one small tiny hair. So the big, huge mountain of the righteous people, for the righteous people, is built out of thousands of thousands of hair, one on top of the other, piles on piles of, of hairs like that. And every time that a person is standing in a test, so he is climbing above one obstacle, above one hair. But if you're climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing, so in the end of your days, you look back and you see thousands and thousands of obstacles, of challenges that you pass them during your lifetime. But every single one of those tests is a very small test that you can pass. Every time that you're angry, you can deal with that anger. Every time that you're afraid, you can deal with that fear. Every time that you're confused, that you don't know, you can deal with that confusion, with that lack of knowledge. You can deal with that. There is a way to deal with that because it's only that problem. The righteous people understand the fact that they need to serve the Creator right now, in the present. Today, if you're going to listen to His voice, listen. Now the person got a challenge in his life. His wife, she's rebuking him. She's fighting with him. At work, they told him that he doesn't have another year, that he won't finish that year, that they're canceling his contract. Whatever. He's losing his mind. Why? Not because that he doesn't know what he's going to eat today. Because he's afraid what's going to happen in five years. How I'm going to live with hell for another 20 years like that of every day arguing. and ar He's not afraid of today. Today he can be quiet and to pass that bridge. It's not a problem. Today it's nonsense. You went through so much in life. It's not a challenge. Why are you upset? Because the Yetzirah, the evil and inclination, put in your mind all of the future. That all of the future is on your back. That what's going to happen? And thousands and thousands of challenges going to come. And how I'm going to deal with all of them. They're not in front of you. If you're just going to live the present, if you're just going to live right now, <coughs> the life that the Creator is supplying, that is giving to you right now, if you're just going to live your life in the present with the Creator, you will find happiness. You will find true happiness. You will find the power to deal with every challenge. And you're going to pass another one and another one. And today you're going to deal with your wife. And tomorrow you're going to deal with your boss. And in the next day you're going to deal with your children. And in the next day you're going to deal with the teacher of that one. And with that parent. And one day at a time. One step at a time. And every step you're going to pass another hair, another obstacle, another stone, another boulder. And in the years when you're going to look back on the past, you're going to see behind you a huge mountain. Piles on piles of challenges that you passed, that you won. But the righteous people are, are, are so lucky because they were not distracted from the power of imagination that was terrifying them. You're not going to make it. What's going to happen? And when you're going to be 70? And when you're going to be 80? And when you're going to be 90? And the evil people, the, the people that followed the evil inclination, no, it's too much for me. How can she talk like that? And he is digging his own grave with his bare hands, drowning himself in the sorrow of his depression. I cannot handle that anymore. It's too much for me. I cannot deal with that. It's too much. How much a person can go through in life? I think, my wife thinks the same, that in the last 10 years, we, I think, we experienced life that 
is equal to maybe 70 or 80 years of regular people life. Like in the last 10 years, we were aging big time, like <laughs> wildly. <laughs> crazy life, crazy life, crazy, crazy experiences, crazy things. But we are focusing in reality. We're focusing in today. Okay, what? Okay, what seems to be the problem? Okay, let's fix it. No, but what you? But they're calling. But from the bank. But from the business. But from the company. But your parents and her parents and the school and that teacher and that place and the yeshiva and the rabbi and the people. No, boom, kill yourself and I'll get over it. And that's it. It's easier. If really you need to deal right now with billions of things, kill yourself. Kill yourself. <laughs> it's better, but it's not reality. It's only because that you expose yourself to things that are not really standing in line. Instead of dealing with one client at a time, one person at a time, one situation, when it comes to your doorstep, deal with it. But before of that, it's not here. Tomorrow. Oh, but I have court in 30 days. Okay, so you have 30 days to do tshuva. You have 30 days to learn Torah. You have 30 days to go to the mikveh. You have 30 days to pray, to scream to Hashem, to tear your heart, to go to righteous people, to open books, to thousands of things, to call your lawyer, to do whatever. 30 days, you can, you can leave the States in 30 days. You can pack your house and run to, to Guatemala if you want. In 30 days, I'm going to teach you what you can do in 30 days. <laughs> you can cross the world in 30 days. You can do whatever you want in 30 days. You can disappear in 30 days. No, why not? Because you're too scared to deal with reality. You can go to Uman, to the grave of righteous Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, and to pray over there in 30 days. You can go and, 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 and go to Israel to pray in the grave of the Ariya Kadosh in Tzfat. You can go to the Western Wall to cry in the Kotel Amaravi. You can do whatever in Jerusalem. You, you know what you can do in 30 days? But you are drowning yourself in your black bitterness and your sadness and your depression 30 days. And the lawyer told me that it will take him at least 60 days. Okay, so it's about time to find another lawyer. You still have 30 days to find another lawyer. It's great. Okay, thank God you found out in the first day that you, can, that you need to find another lawyer. Something you can do. And to go to Hashem in Barach, for sure you can. Today I had something in mind, in the beginning of my Ibadadut, something happened to me in, in my thoughts, and I was disappointed from, from a certain situation in my life. And I said it to Hashem, look how much I'm sacrificing, look how much I'm doing for you, and why you're making those things to get harder and harder on me, why you're not just opening those things for me, I need your help. You know I cannot do it myself. And I know it for sure that I cannot do it myself. So why won't you open it for me? Literally finished my Bodhidut and a person sent me a message to tell me that the earlier message that he sent me, the one that was upsetting me, that was hard on me to deal with, is different. And now we don't have that issue anymore, no longer. And it's fixed and no problem. And you can see Hashem. But only when you look for Hashem. If you look for someone to blame, you're going to find someone to blame. And then you're going to blame yourself on blaming him because you couldn't really blame him. So you're going to blame yourself on it instead. And you're just going to find another person to blame. And then you're going to hate yourself on blaming yourself all of the time. So you're going to blame your parents. And you're going to move on like that, blaming other people on your weaknesses. Weaknesses. Instead of dealing with your weaknesses, weaknesses and just building yourself. One brick after the other. Every journey starts with one step. Every adventure, every business. You need to go on daily basis to your business to open your store every day. You need to, you want to learn to be a scholar, to be Talmud Chacham. Every day you need to learn from the same books over and over to repeat and to read it again and again. That's the only way. 
you want to be righteous, you want to be close to Hashem, you need to walk forward and forward, closer and closer to Him, toward that goal that you set for yourself. You want to be close to Hashem? I'm asking you, you want to be close to Hashem? Okay, where is Hashem? Everywhere. So what seems to be your problem? All of the time, no, I must do this, I must do that, I must accomplish this, I must... What is your goal? You want to be rich or you want to be close to Hashem? You want to remember all the books or you want to be close to Hashem? You want to participate in all of the activities of your community or that you want to be close to Hashem? What is your goal? No, say, I want to be part of that community. Great, so be part of that community. No, but what I'm going to do with my family? Okay, so sometimes you need to choose. What do you want more? To be with your family or to be with the community? You need to choose. If you will choose to be close to Hashem, you will have time for your family, you will have time for your community, you will have time for your hobbies, you will have time for everything you need. You will find Parnassah, you'll find money, you'll find everything you need, and also you'll be healthy. Because Hashem is good for everything. Tov Hashem lako. Hashem is good for health, Hashem is good for wisdom, Hashem is good for long life, Hashem is good to make money. Hashem is good for everything. Hashem tov lakol, tov Hashem lakol. And His mercy, His kindness is on all of His creations. So now, what's the meaning of the word mercy? That He will give something, charity, even to someone that is not worthy, right? So Hashem is good for everything, even when you're not worthy. That's the meaning of that verse. Tov Hashem lakol v'rachamav al kol ma'asav. Hashem is good for everything and His kindness is on all of His creations. So you don't even need to be worthy to enjoy the bounty of Hashem. You just need to be close to Him. And how are you going to be close to Him? Karov Hashem lechol korav. Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him, to everyone that calls Him with truth. Lechol asher yikre'uhu Be'emet. So what you need to do? You need to call him with truth. How you do that? You just need to be honest. And to tell him, Hashem, I feel so far. Hashem, I don't know you. Hashem, where are you? Where in the world are you? Why are you hiding your face from me, Hashem? What's going on, Hashem? I'm so lost. I'm so confused. I'm losing my mind, Hashem. There's so much pressure on me. I feel like I have enemies. I feel like I'm being chased. I feel like I'm, I'm losing my mind here, Hashem. Where are you, Hashem? Please help me. Guide me in the path of your truth. I want to recognize you. I want to feel your love. I want to feel your warmth. I want to feel your support. I want to feel your kindness. Where is your kindness, Hashem? Be truthful, Hashem. This is the way that you choose to guide us. This is the way that you choose to lead us. What's going on, Hashem? I have so many questions, Hashem. I'm afraid to ask you. Hashem, I have questions. I have doubts on you that I'm afraid to share them with you. That I don't want to tell you those thoughts, but you know all the thoughts, Hashem. So what am I going to do with all of my fears, with all of my negative thoughts about you? I'm angry at you, Hashem. I'm upset. You disappointed me, Hashem. I felt disappointed from you, Hashem. I was begging. I was crying. I was sure that you're going to help me. You didn't, Hashem. Why? I'm still not married, Hashem. I'm still not happy. I'm still not healthy, Hashem. Why? Why are you not answering my prayers, Hashem? Be honest. Also be careful because Hashem is about to answer. And you're going to have to deal with that answer. Sometimes there is an answer. Sometimes when you're being answered, it's a new test. There is a test of not knowing the answer. It is a test. But knowing the answer brings you, like we said in the beginning, a question will bring you to an answer, but that answer will bring you to the next question. Now you know the answer. You're going to feel very lousy. It's going to shake your stability. It's going to shake the foundations of your faith. You're going to understand that there are many, many things that you are doing in a very bent and twisted way. You're going to understand that you are way, 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 way far and back from where you thought that you are. 
when you were imagining to yourself that you're holding some spiritual level and you were playing religious and whatever, acting Hasidish and foolish and not being truthful and not being loyal and not being who that you are, lying to yourself, giving too many discounts to yourself, neglecting very important things. So sometimes it's very hard to deal with the truth, but if you will deal with the truth, you will find tools and, and, and advice on how to keep on coming closer and closer to the Creator. And there is no end to that journey. There is no end. There is no end. It means that you can achieve eternity, infinity in your lifetime. You can reach the endless while you are still trapped in your body. When? You're focusing in the roots of your soul. You're going to become so spiritual that you will live your life in a different dimension while people are going to still think that you are a regular person. People are going to look at you, going to shake your hand, going to hug you, going to kiss you, going to feed you, going to see you eating, going to eat from your food. And they're going to think that there is a regular person standing and chatting with them. But a kosher person, a real holy man, a person, not a man, a man or a woman, is a whole different story. Is an angel that looks like a human being. It's not a regular person. It's not a regular person. And it's the potential of every single one of you. Because we are not different. We're completely different in a way, but completely similar in our potential. Because all of our souls have been carved out from under the throne of honor. We're all the children of the Creator. We're all carrying a holy soul within. We all have a channel from our inside that is attaching us to infinity, to eternity, to the Almighty, to Hashem, to the name of all names, to the source of good, to the source of wisdom, to the sea of the souls. You are one of His beams of light. And you can shine to the world from your place. And you don't need to move from your place and to be different. You just need to let it shine. You just need to let your truth to shine. The truth of your soul. The truth that the Creator is revealing through you in the world. And you can achieve prophecy. The level of the, 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 the ancient prophets. You can see things with your eyes, with your mind, with your pure heart. You can see the ancestors. Now I'm hiding again. And I already did Shuvah on that. And I'm hiding again. Sorry. <laughs> You can see your ancestors and you can see angels and you can speak with the Creator face, face to face like that Moshe Rabbeinu. Hashem spoke to Moshe Rabbeinu. Now, now you're going to say, no, Moshe was different. Why Moshe was different? You know the life story of Moshe? Life story of Moshe is a life story of a person that dedicated his life from his early childhood to run after Hashem. And 60 years out of 80, he spent alone in the desert crying and calling Hashem and davening and praying and screaming for salvation. So the result of Moshe Rabbeinu's life journey is to see the prophecy of the burning bush when he was 80. Great. And he kept on serving in crazy Mesirut Nefesh, put all of his power and guts on, on, the, on, the, on the table for, for his people, for the truth, for the Creator, for another 40 years until he was 120. And he was ready to die. And he's saying that to Hashem. 
We're talking about the person that is able to say to Hashem, kill me now, please destroy me, kill me, I don't want to live like that. Kill me. Erase me from the book that you wrote. I don't want to be written in the Torah. If you're about to kill our nation, kill me first. You're going to have to kill me first. If you're not walking with us, we're not going anywhere. Moshe is saying to Hashem. Hashem is telling him, I'm commanding the angels to protect you on the way to the land of Israel. Moshe is telling him, if you're not coming with us, we're not going. What's that? It's ridiculous, no? No, it's not. It's chutzpah. It's a holy chutzpah. It's chutzpah tisge. Chutzpah is going to bring you higher. Chutzpah is going to bring you to the heights. You're able to talk to Hashem like you talk to your best friend. That's the highest level of it, Badadut. When you have help from heaven to speak to the Creator, like you speak to your best friend, that is the highest way of prayer. That's equal to prophecy. That's the highest level of them all. Avraham Avinu, he was talking to Hashem. Yitzchak was talking to Hashem. So they also could see Hashem. Who told you that you cannot see Hashem? You are the fruits of the same trees that your ancestors are. You are the fruits that came out of the branches that are the prophets of our nation. Do you know that you're not one of the great-grandchildren of Ishaya, of Shmuel Anavi? Do you know who you are? Do you know that you're not from a certain tribe and, and, and you're from the other? You know who you are? Do you know the roots of your family? Do you know who you are? Do you have any clue who you are? You don't know yourself. I know a little bit about myself and it's scary. It's scary. It's scary. Do you know who you are? What is your legacy? Who were your ancestors? And even don't look at that. Do you know what are your abilities, your spiritual potential, your power? Do you know what you're capable of? Do you know what Hashem can do with you? You know you are nothing. You're worthless. But you know who Hashem is? What Hashem can do with you? You're a piece of junk. You're a piece of mud. Piece of earth. Piece of nothing. Okay, great. Zero, erase yourself. Like Abraham Avinu said, we are dust. Like Moshe Rabbeinu said, we are nothing. Great, like King David said, you're talking to a dead dog. You're a dead dog. Great, so you are like King David. You're like Abraham Avinu, like Moshe Rabbeinu. Reality. Maybe you're humble and you don't know that. <laughs> Maybe you're just humble and you don't know that. Maybe you're very important in the eyes of the Creator and you just, don't realize that. So you're asking why my prayers are not being answered? I'm going to tell you. The verse is saying, <laughs> If a person saw that he was praying on something and his prayers were not being answered, he should go and pray on it again. That's my recommendation, my advice for you. Don't give up ever, ever. Don't lose hope. Ever, never, don't lose hope. Don't stop till the fat lady sings. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.